Children's Cocktail Hour. Come on into the club, kids. It is 5 o'clock here on the West Coast, 8 o'clock on the East Coast, which means it's both Cocktail Hour and Children's Bedtime Story Hour. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you tonight. Do you feel like one somewhere? I know you're all cooped up in those homes, just riding out this shelter in place, but tonight we're going to Paris. Yes! You are in America in Paris tonight, provided you are uh, actually an American and live in America, because we get viewers from around the world here. And we are going to be making a cocktail that was invented in Paris by an American, and then reading a book written by an American set in Paris about a little girl in Paris. Oh my gosh, all this Paris and Americanism is just driving me bonkers! Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun. The book is Madeline. And I'm sure a lot of you young viewers and a lot of you older viewers are familiar with it because it's a classic. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But before we do, we're going to be making this wonderful cocktail that, uh, like many of my other cocktails, are Prohibition-era cocktails. Now, for those of you too young to remember, Prohibition was a time between 1920 and 1933 where it was illegal. <laughs> to drink alcohol. Yes, it was illegal in this country, this country of freedoms, right and left, you couldn't drink. Why? I'm not really sure, I wasn't born yet. But thank God it was repealed in 1933 and we're allowed to drink responsibly now. So we're gonna be making a drink that was named after a word made up for people who didn't believe in following the law that it was illegal to drink alcohol. In um, uh, the early days of the Prohibition, the uh, Boston Herald sponsored this, this uh, contest to see who could come up with a new word that referred to those terrible people that would flout the law and drink alcohol even though it was illegal. And the winner was the word scofflaw, which is a, uh, how do you say the word? Portmanteau? Portmanteau? Par I can't, it's a big word meaning combining two words. So they uh, combined the word scoff, which means to just kind of ignore or laugh off, and the word law, and that became the word scoff law. And that is the name of the drink that we're going to make it tonight, the scoff law. And the scoff law was invented by a bartender at Harry's American Bar in Paris. And um, oddly enough, they weren't allowed to, allowed to use American bourbon because Americans weren't allowed to make alcohol, so we used Canadian rye. Tonight we're going to be using American rye for the drink. But before we did that, I want to talk a little bit about ice, okay? I talk a lot about ice when we do our shaking and the importance of, of quality ice. I want to just give you a little demonstration about the importance of ice and why we need to choose proper ice. One thing is we all have ice in our fridge, and if you don't have it properly stored, whether it's in a Ziploc bag or a separate compartment, like everything else in your fridge, if there's an open can of tuna or something else, it's going to start absorbing those smells. And that will go into your ice, and when you're taking a drink of your cocktail, that, if you, I don't know if you've ever had a tuna, tuna flavored cocktail, <laughs> but it's not a good thing. Um, so that'll absorb into the ice, and we don't want that. Also the size of the ice, because we talk a lot about dilution. So I wanted to show you what happens if you have, because a lot of people will use crushed ice from their, from their um, fridge, there's a piece of crushed ice, crushed ice. Here is a piece of just regular uh, party ice. And then here is a large piece of ice. This is something you'd see us using in our old fashioned glasses. Um, now, as we're gonna make the cocktail, periodically take a look at these and see how quickly the small one melts and thus dilutes. Because when you melt something, it turns uh, a piece of ice, it turns back into water and thus it dilutes and changes the taste of your drink. So. That's a little lesson, Dr. Science. Well, not really Dr. Science, but I'm gonna to pretend to be a little Dr. Science today. Okay, so we're gonna be building this drink. Uh, it's one of those fun drinks where you can actually take um, part of your ingredients and just kind of double them as you go up. For example, we're gonna be starting with a quarter ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Pop that in, and then we're gonna do, what's twice? Quarter ounce? That's a half ounce. So then we're gonna do a half ounce of homemade Grenadine, put that in there. That means up from a half ounce, we're gonna do a full ounce of dry vermouth. Now this vermouth is French vermouth, not Italian, because our story today takes place in France. And then we're gonna take two full ounces, doubling the one ounce of the grenadine of our American rye. Now this is a um, lovely, low proof, um, rye, so this will be a very smooth drink. Now, 
The other thing I'm going to do differently in this is rather than scoop in our medium-sized ice cubes, we're going to be using larger ice cubes. You can see these large, and I'm going to put that in there because the larger the cube, the more aeration the drink's going to get. And I like a little fizz, a little, little bubbly top on this particular drink. I'm not going to add egg white like we did the other night, but um, I'm going to shake this really good. I have to go a little bit longer because the ice is bigger, but it's going to be diluting it less while still chilling it, but it's going to be aerating it nicely. Take a look how frothy that is. That is going to be tasty. So I'm going to put this in kind of a, a beautiful, fancy, antique glass. It's, um, oh, I have to say, this is really funny. This shows you the influence our show has. One of our uh, viewers in Portland, Oregon, said that her son Liam asked for his uh, juice this morning in a coupe. So clearly we're having an influence on the younger viewers as well. But look at that. Nice and frothy, nice and chilled. Nice red from the grenadine. By the way, as I said, this is a house-made grenadine. Uh, made that actually today by taking two, uh, two and a half cups of pomegranate juice and a full cup of simple syrup, which is simply equal parts water and sugar. And then I took, I am winded from shaking that drink, um, but I earned it. And, and then putting some brandy in there and then, ooh, that's good. Uh, and then uh, letting it chill a little bit, and that's how you make homemade grenadine because the, the bright red stuff you don't like. Okay, so now you can invite the kids in because we're going to sit down and travel to Paris and read all about our little friend, Madeline. Now, one of the things I like about Madeline, and the reason why I thought it would pair nicely with this drink, the Scott Law, is because Madeline was a lovely little girl who lived at a boarding house in Paris, originally from Texas. Um, she was a very good girl, but she didn't necessarily like some of the rules. So she was a bit of a rule breaker, like someone who is a scofflaw, or scofflaw. -er. There you go. Paula Wise really likes your shirt. Why, thank you. Thank you. It's um, my bowling shirt. I'm really very, I'm very big into bowling. Riley, Joe, and, and Finley are watching. Riley, Joe, and Finley! <laughs> Guys, I felt so bad the other day when I was talking about tilting and panning and got it messed up. I know it irritated your dad terribly. <laughs> if you guys have any recommendation for any books or cocktails that you'd like to see, please let us know. You can, uh, if you don't want to put it in the um, comments, you can email or text us. Uh, we do get them and we're always looking out for good books. So here we go with Madeline from Ludwig Bemelman. Oh, before I read this, I have to tell you, one of Joaquin's and my favorite bars in New York is called Bemelman's at the Carlisle Hotel in New York City. And it's called Bemelman's because the entire place was designed and is surrounded by murals from this artist, Ludwig Bemelman's. So here we go, Madeline. Story and pictures by Ludwig Bemelman's. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines. Oh, sorry about my finger kids. Lived tw 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain or shine. I love the fact that you can tell this is the um, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral and there's a uh, 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 place Concorde and all these famous places in Paris. The smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. A brave little girl. All the other girls are afraid, but not Madeline. She loved winter, snow, and ice. 
To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, poo poo. And nobody know, knew so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. In the middle of one night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, something is not right. She's French. Ho, 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 ho. That's what French people do. They go, ho, 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 and ooh la la. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried. Her eyes were red. And soon after Cone came, he rushed to the phone. And soon after Dr. Cone came, he rushed out to the phone. That's a rhyme that I read very poorly. And he dialed, don't turn ten six. Nurse, it's an appendix. Everybody had to cry. Not a single eye was dry. Madeline was in his arm, a blanket safe and warm. In the car with a bright red light, they drove out into the night. Madeline woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. Was she dead? She wasn't dead, and I did a really bad job rhyming hours and flowers. <laughs> but no, Joaquin, don't cry. Stop crying. She's not dead. She's fine. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Madeline soon ate and drank. On her bed there was a crank and a crack on the ceiling had the habit of sometimes looking like a rabbit. Outside were birds and trees and sky, and so ten days passed quickly by. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, This is, isn't this a fine? She was known to pause a long time. Isn't this a fine day to visit, Madeline? She's now Russian because all my accents are Russian. What kind of question is that? <laughs> no, she said, okay, now I have to do this properly. Aha, uh -huh. isn't this a fine day to visit Madeline? <laughs> Visitors from two to four read a sign outside her door, tiptoeing with solemn face with some flowers and a vase. <laughs> Let me see if I can rhyme that better. Tiptoeing with a solemn pause <laughs> with some flowers and a vase. No, that doesn't sound right either. Tiptoeing with a solemn face with some flowers and a vase. Aha, I got it. In they walked and then said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy and the dollhouse, dollhouse from Papa. See, ah rhymes with Papa. And by the way, papa is what Emery calls me. Hi, Emery Rain. I love you. It is your papa. <laughs> but the biggest surprise by far on her stomach was a scar. From then on, she was known as Scarbelly. <laughs> Goodbye, they said. We'll come again. And the little girls left in the rain. They went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Mrs. Clavel turned on the light and said, something is not right. And she did this weird, weird thing in the mirror that we can't tell it what it is, but she was afraid of a disaster. So she ran. Miss Clavel ran fast and faster and said, please children, do tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, Boo-hoo, we want to have our appendix out, too. Ah, good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. And that's all there is. There is no more. That is a story of little Madeline. What kind of story is that? Um, this is a wonderful book, and I did not do it justice with my reading. Um, but uh, I did want to say a special happy birthday to the lovely Miss D of the Wishing Well Preschool Academy. Oh, that rhymed! Ho oh, ho! I am Bimmelmin! Anyway, I hope you enjoy the, the Scofflock cocktail. Hello and good night. Until next time, tomorrow we'll have another book, another cocktail. But until then.
The speakeasy is closed! Shh! What kind of story was that?